The Lottery, Part 2. Directions. Number of paper, 1 to 8. Skip lines so you have room to answer. As you watch the video, pause to answer each of the questions on paper. The answers only have to be one sentence each. When you are done, take a picture of the paper and submit it as an assignment. The characters, they remain the same. Mr. Joe Summers is the owner of the village coal business and he runs the lottery. Mr. Har Harry Graves is the postmaster. He helps organize and run the lottery. Tessie Hutchinson, the wife of Bill Hutchinson, mother of three of the Hutchinson children. Bill Hutchinson, head of the Hutchinson household, Tessie's husband. Second row, old man Warner, the village elder. This is his 77th lottery. Steve Adams, first villager to be called in the lottery. Bill Hutchinson Jr., eldest son of Bill and Tessie Hutchinson. Nancy Hutchinson, daughter of Bill and Tessie Hutchinson. Jane Dunbar, wife of Clyde, mother of Horace. Mrs. Delacroix, a villager and the mother of Donald. Dave Hutchinson, the young, youngest son of Bill and Tessie Hutchinson. Jack Watson, eldest Watson son, drawing this year as head of his household. There was a great deal of preparation to be done before Mr. Summers declared the, began the lottery. He had to make up lists of the heads of families, heads of households in each family, members of each household in each family. Then Mr. Summers had to be sworn in by the postmaster as an official of the lottery. Some of the older people remember that a long time ago, the official of the lottery used to perform a sort of dance. He would move and chant every year. Some people said that the official of the lottery used to stand in a certain position when he said or sang it. Others believed that he was supposed to walk between the villagers. But years and years ago, this part of the ritual had been done away with. There had also been a ritual salute, which the official of the lottery use, used to use every time a person came up to draw a slip of paper from the box. But this had also changed with time. Now, the official only speaks to each person who approaches the box. Mr. Summers was very good at all this, in his clean white shirt and blue jeans, with one hand resting carelessly on the black box. He seemed very proper and important as he talked to Mr. Graves and the Martins. Pause now to answer your questions. Question one, what is one thing that has changed about the lottery? Pause now to write your answer. Press play when you're ready to continue. Just as Mr. Summers finally finished talking and turned to the assembled villagers, Mrs. Hutchinson came hurriedly along the path to the square, her sweater thrown over her shoulders, and she slid into place in the back of the crowd. Totally forgot what day it was, she said to Mrs. Delacroix, who stood next to her, and they both laughed softly. Thought my old man was out back stacking wood, Mrs. Hutchinson went on. And then I looked out the window, and the kids were gone, and then I remembered it was the 27th, and I came running. She dried her hands on her apron, and Mrs. Delacroix said, You're in time, though. They're still talking away up there. Mrs. Hutchinson stretched her neck to see through the crowd and found her husband and children standing near the front. She tapped Mrs. Delacroix on the arm as a farewell and began to make her way through the crowd. The people separated good-humoredly to let her through. Two or three people said in voices just loud enough to be heard across the crowd, Here comes your Mrs. Hutchinson! And Bill, she made it after all! Mrs. Hutchinson reached her husband, and Mr. Summers, who had been waiting, said cheerfully, Thought we were going to have to start without you, Tessie. Mrs. Hutchinson was grinning. You wouldn't want me to leave my dishes in the sink now, would you, Joe? And soft laughter ran through the crowd as the people moved back into position after Mrs. Hutchinson's arrival. Pause now to answer your question. Question two. How do the villagers treat each other? 
Pause now to write your answer and then press play when you're ready to continue. Well now, Mr. Summers said seriously, guess we better get started, get this over with so we can go back to work. Is everybody here? Dunbar, several people said. Dunbar, Dunbar. Mr. Summers looked at his list. Clyde Dunbar, he said. That's right. He's broke his leg, didn't he? Who's taking a slip of paper for him? Me, I guess, a woman said. And Mr. Summers turned to look at her. The wife should take the paper for her husband. Mr. Summers said, Don't you have a grown son to do it for you, Janie? Although all Mr. Summers and everyone else in the village knew the answer perfectly well, it was his job as the official of the lottery to ask such questions. Mr. Summers waited with a polite expression on his face while Mrs. Dunbar answers. Horse isn't even 16 yet, Mrs. Dunbar said regretfully. Guess I gotta fill in for the old man this year. Right, Mr. Summers said. He made a note on the list he was holding. Then he said, is the Watson boy taking a slip of paper this year? A tall boy in the crowd raised his hand. Here, he said, I'm taking a slip of paper for my mother and me. He blinked his eyes nervously and ducked his head as several voices in the crowd said things like, good fellow, Jack, and glad to see your mother's got a young man to do it. Pause now to answer the question. Three, how do Jack Watson, excuse me, that should say, how does Jack Watson react to being in the lottery? Question mark. How do you think he feels about it? Pause now to answer the question. Press play when you're ready to continue. Well, Mr. Summer says, guess, guess that's everyone. Old man want to make it? Here. A voice said, and Mr. Summers nodded. A sudden hush fell on the crowd as Mr. Summers cleared his throat and looked at the list. All ready, he called. Now, I'll read the names. I'll call the heads of families first, and the men will come up and take a paper out of the box. Keep the paper folded in your hand without looking at it until everyone has had a turn. Everything clear? The people had done it so many times that they only half listened to the directions. Most of them were quiet, wetting their lips, not looking around. Then Mr. Summers raised one hand high and said, Adams! A man moved through the crowd and came forward. Hi, Steve, Mr. Summers said, and Mr. Adams said, Hi, Joe. They grinned at one another nervously and seriously. Then Mr. Adams reached into the black box and took out a folded paper. He held it firmly by one corner as he turned and went quickly back to his place in the crowd, where he stood a little bit away from his family, not looking down at his hand. Pause now to answer the questions. Four. How does Mr. Summers feel about his role in the lottery? Five, what does the word nervously imply about the lottery? What does it hint about the lottery? Pause now to answer your questions and then press play when you're ready to continue. Alan, Mr. Summers said. Anderson, Bentham, Seems like there's no time at all between lotteries anymore, Mrs. Delacroix said to Mrs. Graves in the back row. Seems like we got through the last one only last week. Time sure goes fast, Mrs. Graves said. Clark Delacroix, called Mr. Summers, as each man came up to take a slip of paper from the box. There goes my old man, Mrs. Delacroix said. She held her breath while her husband went forward. Dunbar, Mr. Summers said, and Mrs. Dunbar, whose husband was home recovering with a broken leg, 
went nervously up to the box as one of the women said, Go on, Janie, and another one said, There she goes. Where next, Mrs. Graves said. She watched while Mr. Graves came around from the side of the box, greeted Mr. Summers gravely, and selected a slip of paper from the box. By now, all through the crowd, there were men holding the small folded papers in their large hands, turning them over and over nervously. Mrs. Dunbar and her two sons stood together, Mrs. Dunbar holding the slip of paper. Pause now to answer your question. Six, how do the other women react when Janie Dunbar has to go up and take a slip of paper for her husband who is recovering from a broken leg? Pause now to write your answer. Press play when you're ready to continue. Hobbit, Hutchinson, Get up there, Bill, Mrs. Hutchinson said, and the people near her laughed. Jones! They do say, Mr. Adams said to old man Warner, who stood next to him, that over in the North Village, they're talking of stopping the lottery. Old man Warner snorted. <sniffs> they're a pack of crazy fools, he said. They're listening to the young kids. Nothing's good enough for young kids these days. Next thing you know, they'll go back to living in caves. Nobody work anymore. Live that way for a while. There used to be a saying about lottery in June, corn be heavy soon. If we don't hold the lottery, the next thing you know, we'll all be eating weeds and acorns. There's always been a lottery, he added angrily. It's bad enough to see young Joe Summers up there joking with everybody. That's not the way it used to be. Some people... Some places have already quit holding lotteries, Mrs. Adams said. There is nothing but trouble in that, old man Warner said stubbornly. Pack of young fools. Martin, and Bobby Martin watched his father go forward. Overdyke, Percy, I wish they'd hurry. Mrs. Dunbar said to her older son, I wish they'd hurry. They're almost through, her son said. You get ready to run and tell Dad, Mrs. Dunbar said. Pause now to answer the questions. Seven, based on Mr. and Mrs. Adams' conversation with Old Man Warner, how do you think they feel about the lottery? Eight, why doesn't old man Warner want to give up the lottery? Pause now to answer the questions. Press play when you're ready to continue. That's the end of part two. Let's re recap. Setting. Well, it's still summer. It's still June 27th. It's still close to 10 a.m. And they're still in the village square. What's happening with the characters? Well, they seem a little bit more nervous. They're, they're quiet. There's a sudden hush on the crowd. They're half listening. They're turning those papers over in their fingers. Well, what's happening? Well, Mr. Summers is preparing to open the lottery. He's calling the names. People are coming forward. Mrs. Hutchinson arrives a little bit late. Um, the ladies are talking. Um, they're all kind of hoping that this would just get over with. Old Man Warner is mad about uh, people giving up the lottery. He says that saying, lottery in June, corn be heavy soon. So there's an implication here that this is some kind of superstition, that if they hold a lottery in June, that the corn will grow in really well. Either way, he seems like a very angry man. So this is it for part two of the 